So are increasing incidences of asthma amongst children and adults being caused by cars and by traffic? Is there a direct link? There seems to be a lot of suggestion in the media that there is. Let's look into this, shall we? Right after this. A brown car guy. Right, so as I said, there's been some reports in the media recently. So for example, like this one from the Evening Standard, Outer London's worst asthma hotspots reveal. And you know, it, it basically says that this is a charity, Asthma Plus Lung UK has found that South Hall alone has nearly a quarter. 23% of the top 30 GP practices in London where asthma treatment is the most prevalent. The data reveals that 24 out of the 30 GP surgeries uh, with the highest rates of asthma prevalence are in outer London with 70% of these surgeries within just one mile of some of the busiest roads in the capital including the A40, A127 and A41. Um, now there's a very clear uh, attempt there to link asthma with traffic, with cars. And that's clearly what that news report has done. And of course, this is related to ULEZ as well, because it goes on. The charity figures show that the vast majority of GP surgeries, 80%, are not currently in the capital's ultra low emission zone, which is crazy because they're just outside the zone. So, how, how does the bad air stop at one place? But anyway, that's different argument. The point here is to discuss whether or not it is true that asthma is affected by cars. Now, before we get into any of that, um, you know, some people are going to say, oh, he's an asthma denier, you know, he's unsympathetic. I mean, the last time I spoke, for example, in the last video, uh, was in the, the one before, actually, Yule's update, when I was at the concourse and I was talking about these things, and people were saying, oh, the fact, you know, and I, and I said that, look, I've been around cars all my life. 54 years old, no uh, no persistent uh, health conditions, nothing like that, No, certainly no asthma, um, and I've been breathing in car fumes most of my life. So people are like, oh, this is just insulting and childish of him to say that. But I'm sorry, but there's no other way of me putting it, you know? You've got to relate this to personal experiences, and also there's a logic in that, right? You say, if there is a situation, if there is a toxic health air emergency, the toxic air health emergency should affect all people, right? It should affect everybody. If there is, you know, so for example, if you said, when we go back to, you know, and uh, let's just take it for granted that COVID is a real thing, because I know people out there are going to be like, oh, COVID, just, let's just, because I had it, I had it. I tried really hard not to get it. This was in the first year, this was before the vaccines came out. I tried, I was very, very careful and I still got it. So, you know, you take something like that, you go, oh, COVID is bad for you, yes. And it's like, because you can get it, yes, you can. You know, no matter what you do, no matter who you are, you can get it. How it affects you is different, but you can get it. So, you know, that's where you go, okay, then that's a constant. You know, in, even in scientific terms, that's a constant, that's a given. You know, that's a, in a control experiment, you know, if, if you do that, 100% of people will get that, you know. So that's where I'm like, that's, why I, that's the point that I'm trying to make, is that if it's the case that cars are causing these health issues, then people like me should surely be the sickest of all, right? And as for asthma, again, not an asthma denier. My wife is mildly asthmatic, and my father used to have severe asthma. But to be fair, he spent the 60s, 70s, and part of the 80s here, um, and then latterly, um, the late 90s, 2000s, early 2000s. Um, but he spent about half his life uh, between the Middle East and South Asia, the Indian subcontinent. And you can imagine what the pollution uh, was like in those places. So you can imagine that that's a lifetime of him inhaling stuff from around the world, not just from London. Um, and he was here in the worst time, I'll come back to that, uh, in terms of pollution in London. And, uh, and he had other health issues as well, so it wasn't just that, that's not what actually got him in the end. But anyway, um, so, so, you know, but I know how bad it is, I know how serious it is, I know how frightening it can be, I know all of that stuff. So I'm by no means belittling this or insulting anyone or trying to take away from the severity and the seriousness of, of something um, such as asthma. But let's look at this, right? Um, 
it does seem to be increasing, apparently. Um, so they say that now 12% of the UK population um, gets asthma. But it's on par with global figures in the Western world, actually. Um, but yeah, that's a, it's a quite a high number. But again, going back to personal experience, and, and I talked about my dad being living here in the 60s and 70s, and in that previous video that I did, where I walked around the London Concourse, and I gave you some facts and figures about how pollution, and particularly the sort of pollution that is supposed to impact your health, such as NOx, such as particulate emissions, and I talked about how much it was in the tune of like 70 plus percent that those things have reduced in the 70s to now. The air is now much cleaner than it was in the 70s. And um, when I think back, to going to uh, school, St. Luke's Primary School, in fact, in Islington, off Old Street, in central London. That's where I grew up, right in the heart of London. When I think back to those times, and I think back to, well, how many kids had asthma at that time with me in school? I can't think of a single one. I can't think of a single one. And to be honest, like, I can't think of, you know, that incidence of asthma back then. I can't, I just cannot recall. Like, every now and then, you might hear of, like, it was quite a rarity back then. And if you think that, the air was so bad then and then you go oh well, it was such a rarity you know especially amongst children and you think it's much worse now amongst children but the traffic and the air pollution from traffic and general air pollution was much better much worse then then you have to go well what's going on here what is the actual link between asthma incidents in children if you can take away your blinkered view for a minute uh, away from just automotive um, and have a look and have a think about it so there's no denying that it's getting worse that's for sure but um, so, and also like if, you, if you're saying that, well, okay, there were less cars back then. Yeah, it doesn't really count if the air was worse. It doesn't matter how many cars there were. And also the cars have gotten a lot cleaner. So here's the interesting thing about the incident of asthma. Asthma has been increasing, was increasing since that time, consistently up to, apparently from the data that I saw, uh, up to around the 90s. Um, and from the 90s, it kind of started to slow down and it started, and more recently it's kind of plateaued, um, is what the data suggests. So it's actually improving now. So despite these scare stories, uh, the incidence has actually reduced and they're actually improving. And you could argue then that actually that tallies with uh, efficiencies in the automotive sector because of course cars got a lot cleaner from the mid 90s onwards. Um, you know, there were a lot of improvements in the emissions. So you could argue that actually that proves the point. But anyway, the case still stands that, well, why aren't more people, why weren't more people affected in the 60s and 70s when the air was really bad in London? But you know what? Like I said, I'm no expert in terms of uh, asthma. I'm not a doctor or anything like that. So I thought, what, what can I, how can I find out more about what are the causes of asthma? So I went to the NHS website. I think most of you will agree. Um, in the UK, NHS is a solid uh, resource for information. Um, this is what it says there. A number of things can uh, increase your chances of getting asthma. These include having an allergy-related condition such as eczema, food allergy, or hay fever. These are known uh, atopic conditions. Uh, number two, fa having a family history of asthma and atopic conditions. So I guess there's a, a suggestion there that it's genetic. Having had a bronchiolitis, not, bron not bronchitis, bronchiolitis, slightly different. It's a common childhood lung infection. Uh, number, what are we on? Four, exposure to tobacco smoke as a child. Number five, your mother smoking during pregnancy. And number six, being born prematurely before 37 weeks or with a low birth weight. So there's quite a few factors there that can affect asthma in children, as you can see. Asthma symptoms often occur in response to a trigger. And these triggers can include infections like cold and flu, okay? Allergies such as uh, pollen, dust, dust mites, animal fur or feathers, makes sense. Um, smoke, fumes and pollution, okay, figures. Uh, medicine, particularly anti-inflammatory painkillers like ibuprofen and aspirin. Emotions, including stress or laughter. It's interesting. Weather, such as sudden changes in temperature, cold air, wind, thunderstorms, heat and humidity. Mold and damp. And in fact, there have been reports recently about the poor condition of some council houses and stuff like that. And uh, I think it wasn't one child recently reported to have died because of that. And finally, exercise can also trigger it. Uh, Work-related asthma. So maybe it's to do with work. Maybe this will show that there's a link between asthma and automotive because people working in the automotive sector surely should get it more, right? 
In some cases, asthma associated with substances you may be exposed to at work. This is known as occupational asthma. Some of the most common causes of this is, I can't even pronounce this, isocyanates. Isocyanates, chemicals often found in spray paint. Okay, Flour and grain dust. Colophony. A substance often found in solder fumes, solder, solder fumes, sorry, solder. When you solder, you know soldering iron? It's like kind of like welding, you know, but at a smaller scale, electrical scale. Latex, animals, wood dust. Brain sprayers, bakers, pastry makers, nurses, chemical workers, animal handlers, timber workers, welders, and food processing workers are all examples of people who may have a higher risk of being exposed to these substances. I'm not seeing mechanics in there at all. Hmm. I'm not seeing car factory workers. I'm not seeing motor people that work in the field of motorsports. So there was one uh, mention of pollution there, and that was it. What's going on here? Why isn't there a link? Why haven't they mentioned automotive pollution on the NHS website as the cause or the trigger for asthma? What does it actually say? This is what it says. Genetics, pollution, and modern hygiene standards have been suggested as causes. But there's not currently enough evidence to know if any of these do cause asthma. Do you see what I'm getting at now? I'm not saying the cars are beautifully clean and you just stick your mouth into it. Somebody said, oh, let's see how long you last if you cruise yourself in a garage with a car. I mean, that's just a stupid thing to do. I mean, you know, they, they, you know, there aren't beautiful fragrance scents coming out the back of it. It's dangerous stuff coming out of the exhaust pipe. There's no question about that. It's a car. It's just a stupid thing to do. I mean, it's an illogical argument. It's like, oh, let's see how long you last if you do that with a petrol car and how long you last if you do it with an electric car. There's nothing coming out of an electric car. <laughs> that argument's redundant. But the point is like, in a normal, I mean, we don't lock ourselves in garages with cars. In a normal environment, like out here, like right now, with these cars passing me right now, how does that impact you? That's the real question. That's the real test of these things, you know? Um, if you're locking yourself in a garage with a car running, you're basically committing suicide. Let's be honest. So, that 12% figure, that sounds big, sounds scary. But actually, that's also tempered a little bit. So this is from the, uh, this is asthma stats from the British Lung Foundation. We found that 8 million people, over 12% of the population, have been diagnosed with asthma. This means more people have had uh, an asthma diagnosis than have been diagnosed with uh, all other lung diseases combined. Yes, this does not mean, however, that there are 8 million people living with the condition. Many children diagnosed with asthma grow out of it. Asthma UK states that around 5.4 million people receive treatment for the disease. Research has also suggested that asthma may be considerably over-diagnosed. Our data can also confirms that the number of people who have had a diagnosis of asthma is, like I said, plateauing. There has been a small increase of under 3% in recent years. So we go back to the whole argument that people like our mayor, Sadiq Khan, make that there is a public health emergency. Listen, as I said before, I completely understand the gravity of having any illness, and especially something like asthma. I've seen it. Um, so I pray, and I wish you all the best. Anybody out there that's suffering, you absolutely have my sympathy, you have my prayers. I hope you recover, I hope you feel better, I hope you're able to keep it under control. But my point here is that I think it's an oversimplification to basically link this traffic um, actually, there's no traffic there. Okay, let's, 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 there's a bit more traffic on the other side, including a police car. So, just trying to indicate traffic, and there's no traffic. So, there's, and this again, this is the whole point, you know, right? I'm in the area, I'm just outside of the current ULA zone, you know, where they're talking about in, introducing the ULA area because of our traffic, our toxic health air emergency, which you can visibly see, and our traffic situation. But anyway, my point is that it's an oversimplification to link these things directly to cars and traffic. 
So anyway, let me know what you think, put your comments below. Love to hear your feedback. Um, but I think that again, we must look at some of these needs report and temper them a little bit. Um, it feels to me a little bit like A, there's an agenda here to really push the mayor's point of view, especially in something like the Evening Standard because it's a London based uh, media outlet. But B, there's also a greater agenda here to just demonize the car. And um, frankly, as I've said in previous videos, I'm getting a bit fed up of that. Anyway, love to hear your comments. Catch you in the next video. Brown car guy. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please, please hit the like button and share this video as well if you can. And while you're at it, check out these guys who also sponsor my content. I am deeply grateful to them because it helps me to buy new equipment, put fuel in the cars, and yes, buy a cup of coffee. You can do the same. Just go here or right here on YouTube. Just hit these three little dots down here and click on thanks. Make sure you're signed in first. My content is free. But this is how you can help me keep it that way. I may even send you a gift. Oh, by the way, watch this next.